I think the last people are joining. Um, can everyone hear me? Uh, mm -hmm. If you can mention something in the chat, that would be nice. Yes. Okay. I see. Yes. That's very nice. Um, well, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the hydrogen lunch lecture today. Uh, thank you all for joining this last event of the Energy Club this year. And as you may know, from January onwards, a new board will take over and deliver even more interesting events and topics in the field of energy. Of course, they will continue our platform on which not only lunch lectures are given, but also internship opportunities uh, are posted and other interesting events will be held. And today with me, we've invited Mitsubishi Corporation to talk to us about the implementation of hydrogen in the current energy network. And here with me, we have uh, Yusuke Kuroda, the general manager of the Power Solutions Department. Uh, currently, he's working in Amsterdam at Mitsubishi Nederland, if I'm correct. And he'll also introduce briefly the activities Mitsubishi is involved in and what the future holds for the implementation of hydrogen. Um, if you have any other questions uh, during the presentation, please mention them in the chat so we can go through them in the end of the presentation uh, and everything will, be go, will go smoothly. So now I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Kuroda and he'll share a presentation with you. Uh, I will, oh, mm -hmm. just a moment please. Peter, thank you very much for introduction. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Yosuke Kuroda, working for Mitsubishi Netherlands, which is a local office of Mitsubishi Corporation. Uh, personally, during my 25 years company life, I have been in charge of three different but mutually related business areas, uh, conventional oil business, carbon reduction business under Kyoto Protocol, and now hydrogen. Today, I'm really honored to have a great opportunity to present the very hot topic of hydrogen at your energy plan. So next slide, uh, slide please. First of all, I'd like to explain very briefly on my company profile. Uh, Mitsubishi Corporation is a global integrated enterprise which develops and operates businesses together with its offices and subsidiaries in 90 countries, as well as a global network of 1,700 group companies. Next, please. So in this slide, I'd like to make it clear that our company is one of the core companies within Mitsubishi Group, which consists of around 40 independent companies. Next, please. Next, please. Yes. So uh, what Mitsubishi Corporation are doing? Uh, Mitsubishi Corporation consists of 10 business groups covering a wide variety of operations including power solutions, automotive, natural gas, food, and so on. Uh, we develop and operate the project all over the world with local business partners. And many of our business group are looking for their hydrogen and uh, to leverage their industry connection and access. In this slide, I'd like to explain why Japan started to focus on hydrogen. The year 2015 was an important year when all countries should have submitted CO2 reduction target to COP21 Paris Agreement. At that time, Japanese government submitted minus 26% target. In parallel, uh, they set the new energy mix for power sector. This is shown in the light box. Although the fossil-based power was actually 86% at the time in 2015, uh, in the new energy mix, it was reduced to uh, 56% at the time of 2030. However, uh, due to the uncertainty of nuclear power in future, Japanese government needed to consider another green energy, which was uh, the hydrogen. Also, I'd like to tell you that our new uh, prime minister recently announced a net zero target 
in 2050, uh, which will accelerate the reality of hydrogen society, I hope. Next, please. So this is the, our national uh, hydrogen uh, strategy released in 2017. In this strategy, two sectors are highlighted for hydrogen usage. Uh, one is the mobility sector, and second one is a power sector for combustion, hydrogen combustion. Actually, Toyota had been very active to uh, promote the fuel cell car called Mirai, even before national hydrogen strategy was released in 2017. However, they really struggled to create their large scale hydrogen demand only with the mobility sector. So in order to break through this situation and to increase their decarbonized electricity in the, uh, in the uh, energy mix, the government announced this national hydrogen strategy and emphasized to newly create hydrogen demand in the power sector as well. Next, please. So, uh, so uh, how uh, we, Japan, secure hydrogen to meet the large demand of hydrogen in future? The answer is to import hydrogen from overseas because we are the island and small country and also uh, have uh, limited hydrogen sources within our land. In order to import the hydrogen, we need to overcome the technical barrier to transport a large scale of hydrogen. And we have three advanced hydrogen carrier. The first one is a liquefied uh, hydrogen, which uh, is to cooling uh, hydrogen to minus 250 degree Celsius. And second one is a liquid organic chemical hydride, which I will explain later in detail. And third one is ammonia. Okay, next please. So this is our history of a hydrogen uh, initiative. And uh, since our uh, since Japanese government announced its strategic roadmap in 2014, we have taken a number of initiatives. So here we'd like to highlight two activities here. So the first one is a ahead project, ahead project in the middle of the uh, slide. Uh, it started uh, to be built in 2017 and the Mitsubishi Corporation participated to demonstrate leak organic, uh, organic uh, chemical hydrate technology. And this year we successfully transported uh, hydrogen from Brunei to Japan and supplied it to a power plant very close to Tokyo. This is the world first in terms of international hydrogen transportation. The second one is a collaboration with Eneco. I will say, explain later on that. Next, please. So this is the outline of uh, uh, a head project, which I mentioned. Uh, in this project, we are using a liquid organic chemical hydrate method, which is developed by Chiyoda Corporation. Uh, we Mitsubishi Corporation has, uh, you know, uh, thirty-three percent of the stakes of their companies. So, next, please. And you can learn more details of our project from this YouTube. hydrogen supply chain will be established. The core technology is Spera Hydrogen, developed by Chiyoda Corporation. It enables safe, cost-effective transportation ambient that can be fueled the same way gasoline is, except
existing infrastructure, such as storage tanks, utilized without any modification. This technology enables the chemical conversion of hydrogen, originating in by sea and used as expressed by the Latin word spera. Hydrogen is a key that offers fresh hope for global energy issues. This is our big idea. Spera hydrogen widely used in the real world. Four companies, including Chiyoda Corporation, and so established the Advanced Hydrogen Energy Chain Association for Technology Development ahead and launched the world's first global hydrogen supply chain demonstration project funded by NIDO. This is the supply chain flow. First, hydrogen will be produced from the natural gas provided by a Brunei LNG plant. Then, the gas will be chemically converted to spare hydrogen in the hydrogenation plant there. Using ISO standard tank containers, it will be shipped to Japan alongside other cargo. At the port of landing, no special equipment is needed for either storage or onward transportation. Along the coastline of Kawasaki, at the dehydrogenation plant in Toa Oil's KM refinery, hydrogen gas will be extracted from spare hydrogen and be used to supplement the fuel for a thermal power plant. The electricity produced will enter the grid just like electricity generated in conventional power plants does. Plant construction for this project will be completed by 2019 and a maximum of 210 tons of hydrogen will be supplied annually starting in 2020. hydrogen derived from natural energy such as wind power this will help humankind realize a carbon free zero emission society on earth despite the challenges there is hope that's because in 2020 a new hydrogen supply chain will begin Okay, so continue. Uh, from this slide, uh, we like to look at the hydrogen from the different angle. So hydrogen, hydrogen uh, could be used in industrial uh, feedstock, transportation fuel, power storage, and fuel for power generation as well. In addition, its use in fuel cells can supply electricity and heat to the industry, building, and mobility sectors. So hydrogen contributes to uh, decarbonization because it doesn't emit CO2, either during combustion or it's in use in fuel cells. So we believe that together with the renewable energies, hydrogen will play an important role in our new energy system. Hydrogen is a key to achieving future carbon-free societies. 
Mitsubishi Corporation also has the future plans to become producer of CO2 free hydrogen. Yes. So this uh, merge, uh, we gained a joint uh, management stake with Chubu Electric in the Dutch energy company Eneco. Headquartered in Rotterdam, Eneco supplies green uh, electricity power to B2B customers such as Dutch National Railways and Schiphol Airport, as, as well as 6 million B2C customers. The company is also focusing on the hydrogen as a new green energy to strengthen its green brand. Next, please. Yeah. So in July of this year, a consortium that included Eneco was awarded a tender for a large scale offshore wind firm in the North Sea. The project will demonstrate some innovative energy technologies. The consortium will endeavor to supply stable power to the grid by optimizing their fluctuation wind power through a combination of multiple new technologies. These include uh, floating solar, battery storage, optimized wind turbine, and green hydrogen production as well. So looking more to the long-term future, Mitsubishi Corporation wishes to utilize the knowledge gained from this initiative in the region other than Europe. With the full advantage of green energy assets of Eneco and the rest of our global assets in renewables, uh, our ultimate goal is to play an important role in decarbonizing the world, both with renewable energies and hydrogen. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Kuroda, for uh, this presentation. Uh, I think give a very brief introduction to how Mitsubishi is contributing to the research and uh, implementation of the hydrogen supply chain. Um, yep. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please uh, mention them in the chat, as I mentioned earlier. Um, let me see. Cur currently, there are no questions in the chat. It means a very clear presentation. <laughs> and so I was also curious about one thing, because uh, you mentioned that Mitsubishi is involved in uh, the mainly in the transportation between Brunei and Japan, and it focuses on the transportation from hydrogen. But is it also involved in research in uh, implementing the hydrogen plants uh, on Japan itself? Um, uh, or is it mainly focusing on uh, external plants? Yes. So more clearly speaking, uh, firstly, I would like to mention the situation, uh, energy situation in Japan and Europe is different. So uh, first three year, Japan is, uh, as I said to you, uh, island and small country. So we are importing most of the energy from, uh, uh, from the overseas. And uh, actually uh, Mitsubishi Corporation is the, uh, one of the biggest importer of you know, uh, fossil fuels in the past. So looking at the future also, uh, we are uh, you know, expecting the hydrogen to be the next, you know, <laughs> energy for, you know, uh, for us to, you know, play a great, you know, uh, law to import. And on the other hand, you know, uh, in Euro, for example, so hydrogen is also focused, you know, uh, uh, by the uh, every, you know, uh, EU countries. But uh, of course, you know, they are looking at the, uh, you know, uh, future import of hydrogen, but Basically, they would like to, you know, uh, focus on the, uh, you know, local production and uh, uh, local consumption first, because in Europe already uh, more, you know, renew renewables are introduced already, so, and uh, they need to, you know, uh, let's say the balance the fractures on the uh, renewable energy. So in order to do that, 
you know, uh, they would like to use the hydrogen for the storage purpose as well. So uh, again, so in, in Japan or Asia, uh, we are looking uh, or starting to, you know, uh, focus on the uh, uh, large scale uh, supply chain business model. But in here, Europe, you know, we need to, you know, look at the, uh, you know, different type of business model. So like, uh, you know, green, you know, uh, hydrogen production. So uh, we haven't decided yet, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, good, you know, opportunity. So uh, EU already, you know, uh, announced the uh, strategy for hydrogen in July, and they uh, already announced the uh, very huge, you know, uh, plan to uh, use the uh, green hydrogen already. So, and again, you know, uh, they are, you know, basically uh, uh, assumed to produce uh, within the uh, uh, EU countries first. And then in the future, they may, you know, uh, import. So I think the situation is different. So our business model also uh, may be, you know, uh, different. That's my... Uh, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, I can, I can understand. Okay. Um, and now uh, there's one question. Uh, can we hear more about the Mitsubishi connection with Ineco? Uh, like a few years back, you um, uh, got involved with Ineco. And I can assume you you gained knowledge about, for example, with the wind park, uh, they're producing hydro hydrogen uh, offshore. Is that also something that you gained knowledge uh, about this wind park that you can actually implement uh, in Japan, or is it only that that is that an idea or knowledge that leaves uh, that stays in Europe and will not be implemented? Uh, actually, in we, we started to you know share our knowledge about you know. Uh, uh, we just, you know, uh, joined the uh, team of Eneco only, uh, uh, you know, uh, several months. So we are now, you know, uh, sharing the, uh, our knowledge at this moment. But in the future, maybe, you know, uh, this kind of, you know, situation will happen. Yeah. Yeah. So for now, it's currently, it's just yep. uh, sh sharing knowledge. Yeah. And, okay. And, and what technology do you think is, uh, is able to be implemented in Japan? That Ineco uses at the moment. I think one of the option is we, of course, the wind power also. Okay. And hydrogen as well. We are, you know, uh, of course, you know, uh, seeking possibility to collaborate. Yeah. Because are there also any other uh, future companies that are or future collaborations that uh, Mitsubishi is looking into? Other companies, you mean? Yeah, for, for other technologies besides uh, wind and solar that Eneco is uh, uh, has many yes. knowledge in. Mm -hmm. I think you know, uh, in order to you know uh, entering into the new business area, I think you know uh, partnership is very important for the business development. So uh, if uh, our knowledge, including Eneco, is not enough, I think we should involve the other you know, partners as well. So. It's a very so very sorry for the uh, you know general you know answers, but that's uh, no problem. Yeah. Um, I also see a question from Matteo. Uh, is mm -hmm. I saw that the hydrogen is still produced from natural gas. Uh, is there any future plans to produce it from renewable energies? Yes, uh, we are looking for to you know for uh, to producing the green hydrogen. It's uh, green hydrogen will be produced uh, from the uh, renewables. So uh, in our ahead project, as explained to you, we are uh, producing the hydrogen from the uh, natural uh, gas plant, LNG plant. But uh, it's uh, 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 we, we are using the uh, already uh, you know waste you know uh, gas. It's a low pressure gas. It's you know flared in the air. So it's not you know emitting CO two additionally. Okay. And uh, but, uh, it's a demonstration project. That's why we you know take up this uh, uh, um, natural gas based you know uh, hydrogen. But in the future we should you know look at the uh, uh, renewable. But the uh, uh, big hurdle is the cost. Uh, actually, the uh, uh, fossil fuel based uh, hydrogen will be cheaper than in the green hydrogen. 
So of course, we in the future we are looking for a renewable-based hydrogen. But from the initial stage, we may use uh, we mean in Japan. Japan will use the uh, gray, gray or you know uh, fossil fuel uh, fuel based uh, hydrogen. Yeah. But here, also you know, uh, EU is looking at the green uh, uh, hydrogen, but. Also, they are going to we are go, they are going to use the uh, uh, fossil based hydrogen plus uh, maybe CCS uh, carbon uh, capture storage or green certificate. Yeah, kind of. Okay, so mainly it's focused now on gray hydrogen, and in the future the prospects will be that will be entirely yeah. uh, green hydrogen produced. Yes, that's yeah. ultimate goal. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Uh, there's another question from Bob. Um, how does the Japanese government plan to stimulate the hydrogen to overcome the cost barrier? For example, as you, as you already mentioned, the carbon tax or other subsidies or laws um, that form a problem? Um, okay. So I think the uh, uh, biggest point is uh, how to create the uh, large scale demand. Otherwise, situation is ticking and egg, you know, situation. So even though the, uh, you know, supply side are ready, uh, if uh, uh, they cannot, you know, uh, prepare the uh, uh, demand side, you know, demand, supply chain will be not uh, established. And Japanese government is focusing on the uh, large scale, potentially large scale demand in the uh, power sector. And that's why they started to you know, uh, study how to financially is support this sector. Okay. So that is also, uh, there are many subsidies giving out to uh, Mitsubishi Corporation and other uh, companies focusing think, yes, on yes. generation of power. As concrete plan was not, you know, uh, released because actually, you know, uh, 2017, they already uh, released the uh, strategy, uh, hydrogen uh, strategy. But after that, you know, uh, they're focusing on our, you know, demonstration project. So now they are going to reconsider or restart how to, you know, uh, how to uh, realize the uh, commercialized, you know, uh, stage yeah. of hydrogen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's and then the, I would like to say, you know, the uh, you know, also the Japan and the EU is a different. So for the potentially large scale demand, uh, Japan is looking at the uh, uh, power sector, which I mentioned, but EU is looking at the uh, industry or uh, gas grid is the uh, you know a large scale to receive the uh, uh, hydrogen and they yeah. would you know re you know uh, 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 realize a decarbonization of, of this uh, you know sectors yeah do you think there are more barriers to overcome in Japan or in Europe as you have some experience uh, or some knowledge about Europe now? Yes, uh, I think, you know, uh, this kind of uh, movement is, uh, I'd say EU is uh, more advanced to, you know, uh, accelerate the, uh, uh, or, you know, create the uh, demand. So I think uh, we can learn uh, from EU much. Yeah. Um, then Anirudh has also a question, and uh, it is mentioned about hydrogen transport by organic hybrids, uh, hybrids. The Hydrate. other option is by ammonia, as you have in slide six. Is Mitsubishi also looking into hydrogen transport by ammonia? And can you give your thoughts on that? Uh, and maybe yes. a price comparison with the organic hydride transport. Oh, okay, very, you know, <laughs> Uh, interesting and uh, uh, difficult uh, question to me. 
So the first three, I would say, uh, we are covering all, or you know, we are uh, watching or monitoring the uh, every uh, kind of uh, carriers, including ammonia as well. Ihara san, uh, could you, uh, you know, show the screen, page seven? Uh, yes, pre-in the 2018, we participated in the Green Ammonia Consortium as well. So, which meaning we are looking at the, you know, uh, business opportunities to import uh, the hydrogen as a form of ammonia. The um, in, um, uh, for the ammonia, um, uh, we can use the uh, ammonia as it is in the uh, power sector as well, because you know ammonia does not emit CO2 as well as this hydrogen, and uh, ammonia will be conversed uh, with the uh, uh, coal, coal as well. So ammonia will be also the uh, uh, potential option for purely hydrogen and, uh, you know, as ammonia it is. And the second question is uh, which, uh, you know, carrier is uh, the uh, competitive? So at this moment, we don't have an answer and not only Mitsubishi, but also the uh, uh, people are looking for which, uh, you know, carrier will be, you know, competitive. So it's, uh, you know, example, the, uh, I will explain or introduce the uh, uh, character of the each uh, carriers. First, three, the liquid uh, hydrogen is uh, you know uh, has a uh, uh, best purity among these you know uh, carrier. So, but uh, for the uh, infrastructure uh, we need to invest in the huge uh, huge one uh, for uh, the liquid uh, hydrogen because uh, we need to you know cool the hydrogen to the uh, minus 250 which is still has a you know uh, technical barrier as well and uh, but at least of the two organic hydrides and ammonia we can use the uh, existing infrastructure and like a uh, uh, chemical tanker and uh, tankage as well. So which meaning that we think that two of them will be area commercialized, but in the long run, so who will win? This is, uh, you know, uh, this is a very you know, uh, difficult question to ask at this moment. That's why we are, uh, you know, uh, taking care of the all three, you know, all method at this moment. Okay, thank you for uh, answering this question. Um, I explain about the liquid, you know, uh, liquid hydrogen. So, in the uh, upside, 2016, we participated in the Hyper project. It's a Norwegian project. It's a, a desktop project of liquefied uh, hydrogen. So, which meaning that? We cover all of the uh, you know uh, carriers. So hyper is a liquid hydrogen, and ammonia consortium is ammonia, and uh, our ahead project is a uh, organic chemical hydride method. So three of them we are covering. Okay, thank you. Um, then I also had this final question. I saw in a slide that um, you were shipping the hydrogen in ships. Why do you choose that over, uh, for example, pipelines or other forms of transport? Uh, uh, the question is, sorry, uh, question is. Uh, yeah, the transportation uh, is solely done by shipping. Uh, mm -hmm. Why is that chosen uh, instead of pipelines or other forms of transportation? So if the market is in New York, we can, you know, choose the uh, option of pipeline. But again, uh, Japan is a iron country, so we, you know, uh, we should, you know, uh, 
import the energy by SIP, as, as well as you know, we are doing in case of coal, oil, or LNG. So in case we need to import, we need to you know, uh, develop the uh, technology to transport the uh, uh, hydrogen as well. Okay, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I see that there are no more questions. All the questions are answered. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have uh, any questions myself either anymore. So I think it's a good time to wrap up the event. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to thank you very much for giving this presentation. Yep. Um, we have recorded the event. So if anyone else has uh, questions afterwards, uh, feel free to contact us and we will send it to uh, Mr. Kuroda and yes. um, he'll be available to answer these questions, of course. Of course. Um, but for now, I want to thank you all for joining this event and uh, hopefully see you all uh, next year in all the coming events in January and February onwards. So uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.